Pre-calc, chapter two, section one. So this is about quadratics in the first part of this chapter. So let's first talk about some review of quadratics. So we're gonna try solving these three different uh, equations here. We can look at our different methods for solving quadratics. Um, all of these have an x squared and an x. So that's the first thing we realize, because if you only have the x squared, you should be able to isolate and square root to find the answer. But we don't here. They all have x squared and x. So the first one we'll look at is, is this problem here, which to solve this, we can look at factoring, but this does not factor. So we can go to quadratic formula for this one. So the quadratic formula will be x equals negative b, which is negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's 36 minus 4 times our a value, which is 1, so it doesn't change anything, times c, which is negative 17, all over double a, so that's 2. And so if we simplify this, we have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of, so this is going to be 36 plus, the negative times negative is positive, and 4 times 17 is 68. If I add that, I get 6, 9, 1, 104, all over 2. And then uh, we could try simplify this a little bit. So if you have simplifying the square root of 104, square root of 104, I can divide that. So I know 4 goes into that. So it's the same thing as 4 times 26. And then uh, it's the same thing as 4 times 4 times 6. So that would be 4 times root 6. So if I just simplify that radical. So this ends up being negative 6 plus or minus 4 root 6 over 2, which then we can rewrite as, we can divide both terms by 2, we get negative 3 plus 2 root 6. So that would be the final answer. That would be exact. So that's the first thing, quadratic formula. It's a uh, second one here, we just be factoring. So for this one here, we want to break this up by trying to figure out what two binomials give us that quadratic. And so x times x gives us the x squared. And now we're looking at what two numbers multiply to be 8 but have an oi value of 6. So that would be plus 4 and then plus 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Let's check oi. That's 2x and 4x is 6x. So that works. Now to solve that, we set each of these quantities equal to 0. So we have x is negative 4. And then here we set this equal to 0, and we have x is negative 2. So that would be the two solutions for that quadratic. The third problem we're going to look at, we're completing the square. 2x squared plus 10x minus 8 equals 0. You cannot complete the square when the a value is any number besides 1. So we need to get rid of that. We need to... Um, divide it out in this case or factor it out in some problem. So here we're going to just divide both sides by 2. It's kind of nice when the right side is 0 because when we divide by 2 we just still get 0. On the left side we divide each term by 2. So you get x squared plus 5x minus 4. Notice that makes the number so much smaller which makes it easier. Uh, and so now we want to try solving this using completing the square. So uh, to do this, it's not the easiest method because our b value is not even, but we should still be able to do it. To complete the square, we want to add some number to this two terms. I'm going to move the 4 to the right-hand side, so I add 4 to both sides. The number we're going to add here is always half your b value squared. That's the number that's going to go in here. So half of 5 is 5 halves. 5 halves squared is 25 fourths. I need to add that to both sides. So complete the square. Uh, do you recall how to do that? You should be familiar. You need to be familiar throughout the year. It pops up a few times. So we add it to both sides. The whole point of that, why do you complete the square? Why do you add that value? Is because now this trinomial becomes a perfect square. That's why it's called completing the square. This will always factor to x and then half your b value which is the 5 halves squared. That quantity squared will give us this trinomial equals and then we have to do 4 plus 25 fourths so that's 16 fourths so that's 41 fourths 
Now we have to solve this. To solve this, I want to get rid of the square term first. So it's square root both sides. When you do that, I get x plus 5 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 41 fourths. So I'm going to leave the numerator as the square root of 41, but the square root of 4, I know that. It's 2. And also, it's the radical out of the basement, which is kind of nice uh, out of the denominator. The last step is to subtract 5 halves of both sides. So x equals a negative 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 41 over 2. So this would be the final answer. You get the same answer if you did quadratic formula. Um, and this is actually not factorable. So three ways of solving quadratics, uh, quadratic formula, factoring, and completing the square. You should be familiar in all three methods. So polynomial functions. Uh, this whole chapter is about polynomials. We begin with just quadratics. So this polynomial, f of x, is a polynomial where you're given all of this junk here. And all it's saying is you start with uh, some degree n, and it decreases as you move along to 1 to move along the polynomial. Those are the exponents. Or previously, we looked at this. f of x equals a is called a constant function. y equals mx plus b. That's linear. While uh, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which we should know as a quadratic. So quadratics, they have a graph that is called a parabola. Axis of symmetry is the vertical line through the point called the vertex. Um, and so that point, which is called the vertex, is the highest or lowest point. And to find that, it's always negative b over 2a. That finds the x value of the vertex. That a value, if it's greater than 0, it opens up and has a minimum at that vertex. If it, uh, A is negative, we should know it's a vertical reflection, so it opens down. And it has a maximum, then, at that vertex again. So negative B over T, 2A, finds that vertex. So let's graph these two. So Y equals 2X squared. So here's my vertex. If I go right one, I'm going to go up two. That's an awesome A value. If I plug 2 in there, I'm going to get 8. So I'm going to call this good right here. So there's the problem. Uh, negative 2x squared minus 4, what happens? Well, the negative here reflects it, and the negative 4 here moves it down. So this point here is going to go down 4. So it's going to be here. I'm going to go right 1 and down 2. So you, it's going to be off this graph, really. It's really curved, but there it's way down there. So a quick sketch of uh, those quadratics. Standard form or uh, vertex form. So we can call it, uh, this is called vertex form, what we've known in the past, where you have uh, A times the quantity of X minus H squared plus K. This is uses that HK, that shifting we talked about, and we still have the awesome A value here. Uh, standard form for a quadratic is the AX squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That's standard form for a quadratic. Intercept form is this one here where it's actually like a factored form. So you just factor the quadratic, you'll find it in intercept form where uh, p and q are the actual x-intercepts. So example, let's write the equation given the vertex in a point. So we know our vertex and we know another point. So we're given this the point describes x, y, the vertex describes h, k. So in our equation, y equals a times x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k, we can plug in what we know. We know our y value is 4. That's a true point for that graph. We do not know a. x is negative 2 minus our h value, which is negative 4, so it ends up being minus negative or plus 4 squared plus a negative 1 which is our k value. So the only variable we have left is a so we can just solve for it. So this is going to be negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4 minus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides and then divide by 4. So a is 5 fourths. That's our a value. So now I can rewrite the equation with my a value with the h value and the k value. So there's the equation I write. 
A uh, more difficult example here is to put this in a vertex form and then to find the vertex and the intercepts. Um, to do that, putting it in vertex form, to do that, we need to complete the square. So to complete the square here, we're not solving it. So we actually are a tad bit different than the previous example. We actually want to first factor out this negative. I'm not going to divide by negative, I'm going to keep everything on the right hand side. So if I factor out a negative 1, I'm left with x squared minus 4x, and then I'm going to leave the minus 3 outside that. So I'm only factoring the negative 1 out from these two terms. Uh, and the reason why I want to do that is hopefully you start seeing here that this minus 3 is really the k value. This negative 1 is going to end up being the a value. So uh, the negative 3 I kind of separate. This is my k value, I leave it alone. Then I'm going to factor a negative 1 out from those two terms to get what I have at the next step. Now I want to complete the square. So what number needs to go right here? It's our b value is negative 4. So I divide it by 2, negative 2, and I square it to so get positive 4. So then I can't just add 4 to this side. I need to make sure that I uh, keep it balanced. So I need to do the opposite to the same side. I'm adding 4 here, but it's not really adding 4. This is a negative 1 times 4. So it's really like I'm subtracting 4. So I should also add 4 to the side. So now in red here, I'm, I'm subtracting 4 first, and I'm adding 4, which becomes 0. So right now I have this problem, negative 1, uh, x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 1. So now let's factor that perfect square that factors so negative 1 times and it's going to factor to x half our b value squared plus 1 and now we have it in vertex form so the nice thing is now we know the vertex it's the horizontal shift and the vertical shift so the vertex is going to be our h k there's a vertex 2 1 now to find the intercepts the x-intercept is found by plugging 0 in for y and solving it. So I subtract 1 to both sides, divide by a, neg divide by a negative, and I'll square root both. So I get plus or minus 1 equals x minus 2. Then I can add 2 to both sides. So 2 plus or minus 1 equals x. So 2 plus 1 is 3 or 2 minus 1 is 1. Those are our two x-intercepts. The y-intercept is found by plugging 0 in for x. So I'm going back to this function that we wrote right here. So then this is going to be y equals negative 2 squared is 4, and then we get negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. I'm going to have you try doing your own here. Now be careful. I'm going to tell you, you have an a value that's 2. Be careful when you complete the square with that. But you need to put this in vertex form. So then you can find the vertex, the intercepts. Uh -huh. And so give us a shot. This is your homework problem. You're going to turn this in get any class tomorrow. One last problem for you. Uh, minimize cost. It happens minimizing and maximizing a lot with these. If C is the total cost that it, it takes, to uh, produce X number of newspapers. So you're printing newspaper. X is the number of, of papers you're printing. C is the cost it takes. We can minimize that cost. So if we look at this equation. If this equation represents our cost as X changes, let's look at the shape of this. So our A value is the one in front of X squared. So this is really our A value. This is our B value. This is really our C value. So it's not in the same order and so since our a value is positive, it's a parabola opening up. To find this minimum, you could use the calculator to do that. We could also find this point, which is called the vertex, by using x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b is so negative b is going to be 108 divided by double a. So it's going to be 0 0.12, double the 0 0.06. If you divide those, you get 900. So 900 new is what you want to sell to minimize your cost. There's the x value. Now, if you want to find the y value, you just take and plug 900 in for x right here, and you solve it. The cost would be $6,400. That's how much it would cost to print 900 newspapers. So we're going to call it good there. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow.